This lesson will finish up the um, Old Testament, and um, like I said, it's just meant to be a real quick, real quick and easy to understand kind of thing. Um, I do have another class called the Old Testament Made Easy that kind of goes deeper into this stuff. Um, however, uh, some of that stuff might seem a little bit confusing, um, so I will try to post more stuff about... Um, specific questions asked, more stuff about um, each book itself, parts of the book, specific teachings and sermons and stuff like that. Hopefully that'll help. Excuse me. Okay. So the prophets are a lot different than people kind of see them in today. Um... And I'll do my best to kind of write some of those wrong ideas. Um, as far as when the prophets spoke, uh, they came between this or the the recorded prophets. That is, there are some that aren't don't have their own books like Elijah and Elisha. But of the recorded prophets, <laughs> it's a little loud, huh? But of the recorded prophets, um. In, in the Bible that have their own books, they the earliest one is in the 700s, and the latest one is in the 400s. <clears throat> and of those prophets, they're, they're broken up into two categories. One's called major, and one's called minor. Of the major prophets, there's Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel. Now, you're going to notice a book called Lamentations in your Bible that's right after Jeremiah. I'll come back to that one. Um, that's not actually a... Uh, prophet book, a prophecy book. Um, then there's the minors. Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. Um, so taking the grand total to uh, 16, I think. Um, anyways, uh, so those are all the all the prophets, major and minor. Why are some are, some are called major and some are called minor is because the major tend to have a broader focus, maybe a little bit longer of a ministry, maybe um, a wider of an audience, and minor tends to tends to be real short to only specific people, you know, kind of closed more closed off, uh, and the major prophets tend to be longer. Um, I know Daniel's only tw twelve chapters long, and um, one or two of the minor prophets are also 12 chapters long, but um, they're, Daniel's actually a little bit longer and once again has a broader focus. So, um, As far as what a prophet did, they informed people and they warned people. They didn't have some special manipulative, manipulative power over God. That's just not true. They informed them what God was going to do. Like There's this one part where the prophet Elijah is telling, telling Ahab what's going to happen, and uh, King Ahab says, you know, basically says, you're the enemy. And, and basically, Elijah says, you know, no, I'm, I'm not the enemy. I'm just saying what God is going to do. They, see, they informed. See, I, when I was a kid, I always thought that prophets did something like this. That I'm going to just tell them, God's going to make you spill your coffee. And, you know, then they would happen. Well, no, the prophet spoke according to the word of the Lord. Oh, repeatedly, it constantly says, as the Lord said, the Lord says this, as the Lord said. See what I mean? It, it, the focus is on God. Um, they warned people about what would happen. They warned them about their sins. They called them to repent. They told them about what would happen if they continued in their actions. They, they proclaimed to them salvation. They gave them the opportunity um, a, a, of a different way of living. They, they tried to wake them up spiritually. They tried to restore them back to a right relationship with God, back to a right relationship with, with people, back to doing the right thing. So that was what they did. As far as their message, nobody desires to be a prophet. No, you know what I mean? Like Nobody... Um, manipulates their own to being a prophet. Either God calls you as a prophet or God does not call you as a prophet. However, be very careful about people nowadays who call themselves prophet and, uh, you know, charge for their services and that kind of stuff. Yes, the Holy through the power of the Holy Spirit, prophetic words are still given. Yes. However, be careful of people who call themselves prophets. Just saying. I'm going to move right past that, but especially you guys who watch televangelists. Um, so a prophet is someone called by God, not called by themselves. They didn't necessarily want to do this. Um, 
Also, what what about the content of the prophets? When prophets spoke in the Old Testament, they were not as a lot of people see them. They were giving God's message, not their own message, God's message to people who were hurt and lost. So remember why Jesus came, to seek and to save that which was lost. God sent prophets to seek and to save that which was lost. Why would he have sent sent people just to say, hey, I'm not going to forgive you. This is the destruction that's approaching you. That's it. God always desired for them to repent. And that's why he gave so many messages. He gave the law. They didn't listen to that. He gave prophets. They didn't listen to that. He gave, you know what I mean, signs and wonders. They didn't listen to that. He gave, you know what I mean, he withdrew his presence. They didn't listen to that. All these different things that they refused to listen to until finally God had to exile them from the promised land. But their failure still didn't negate God's promise. God still had a plan. Um, oftentimes people see them as, you know, oh, you know, just weird. You know, they just lose control and, oh, what happened? Where was I? Um, and then they have spoken or done God's word. No, 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 no. In fact, 1 Corinthians says that the spirit of a prophet is subject to the prophet. In other words, the person has control over what they're doing. It's not like, see what I mean? They can choose whether to say what God told them to say or whether to, to say what they want to say. See what I mean? And um, obviously, God greatly, greatly punishes someone who claims to be a prophet and maybe even has his word and then twists it for themselves um, or for profit or stuff like that. Um <clears throat> so they're not hysterical and they're not babblers. They're not fanatics. They're just they're not just a bunch of crazies out there. Um, for the most part, they're people who are who are devoted to God. They're they're, they're people who love God. Um, they're not fortune tellers. You know where you where you pay them and they look into the crystal ball. God clearly revealed to them. Say this. God clearly spoke to them. Do this. Um, they're not these argumentative pricks out there. They're not just some jerks waiting to start a fight. Um, I'm going to say this, and then when they say it, I'm going to say this. That that wasn't that wasn't their their heart. Um, and we we can know this because the Bible frequently talks about the heart of a prophet. Um, and they weren't just waiting to yell at people, angry and hateful towards that, towards the world. Oh, the, they were all sinners, and I'm just so much better than you. Um, that wasn't their heart. The heart of a prophet is one who loves, loves people, one who loves God. Um, and you can tell that their heart wasn't in, they didn't enjoy the fact that people were going to get destruction, um, except for maybe Jonah and a couple others. But um, it's obvious from the story, though, that the heart was wrong in those situations. See, oftentimes what people do is they say, you know, we need to we need to stop sugarcoating sugarcoating the gospel and really mention sin. Yeah, I think I think sin should be mentioned, obviously. But what what happens is people go to sinners and say, yes, you are sinners and you're going to hell. Well, I'm just saying what the Bible says. Yeah, but you get catch more flies with honey than vinegar. Not only that, but remember that the prophets, for the most part, were sent to people who should have known better. They had the law. We were basically the Christians of back then. Okay, some of them were not. Okay, like Jonah, for instance, was going, was given to the Syrians, not not to the not to Israel. But remember that for the most part, it was, the prophets did go to God's people. Very rarely, um, except for when there's a, a big thing that's that's going to happen, like a big day of judgment or something like that. Does does God um, punish people to the same degree who didn't know, didn't have an opportunity to know? Okay. Um, and also pay attention to what they were being punished for, too. That's kind of important, too. Um, but the heart of a prophet is one who has compassion for people, who, has, who, who, who desires God's mercy to move, who, um, who speaks not because they, they, they enjoy it. In fact, oftentimes the prophets didn't enjoy it. But because they had a message from God that God told them to say, and they were, they were being obedient to God. Okay? Keep in mind that God is the final judge of things, and whereas though we can be discerning and whatnot, Christians are not called to rush to judgment and rush to um, calling it like it is. You know, Jesus had many opportunities to call it like it was, and he didn't. Uh, the woman who was caught in adultery, um, she didn't necessarily say anything in her defense. He didn't really say anything. Uh, eventually the people just went away, and then he said, go and, and sin no more. And sin no more. So I mean, but he didn't he didn't rub people's nose in their sins. Does that make sense? 
And uh, Jesus was obviously the greatest prophet that there was. Yes, he was God, he was man, he was also prophet. Um, and I think we can see a lot from the heart of the prophets by studying Jesus. Um, and, the, and the heart of a prophet really does desire compassion. In fact, a, a prophet oftentimes will never even say something about um, judgment. Oftentimes. If you're in a Pentecostal church, um, you'll hear how God will give words, and oftentimes to people who are struggling, people who aren't righteous. God, how could you possibly give a word of encouragement to these people? See what I mean? That self-righteous attitude, the prophets didn't have that. I know people who use the prophets as a weapon to beat people up. And I would encourage you that the Bible is not for beating people, but for restoring people. And... Uh, if you're always talking about sin, there might be a problem. And if you're never, if you're only talking about, I can do whatever I want because I'm on under under the law of, uh, of grace. Well, then you're probably missing it too. Um, you don't have to be Joel Osteen, all going to one extreme, but you don't have to be, you know, this other guy over here who just uh, judgment, 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 judgment. God's gonna cut you down. You know what I mean? Um, Sometimes I've seen people who don't like to say say words of judgment, but and in fact it, it grieves them in their heart when they say it. But then they still say it, and oh, I'm just saying, calling it like it is. But God didn't tell you to say that. See what I mean? Well, He told Ezekiel. No, no, no. He told Ezekiel. He told Daniel. He told. See what I mean? But He hasn't told you go and tell this people this. See what I mean? Um, because there's there's evidence when the Holy Spirit moves someone to speak. There's evidence of it. Um, <clears throat> they they use songs, they use parables, they use object lessons, they use a lot of different creative ways to, to tell people uh, God's message. They didn't manipulate God, they didn't twist his arm behind his back. It's not like they, oh, they fasted, so now God has to listen to them. Um, they were just servants in the hands of God. God used them as he wished. Um, they didn't do ma magical incantations. God told them, say this, and they went and said that. Um, they addressed the heart. The heart of people um, rather than doing all the right things um, they did connect outward action with inner spirituality though you see them let me break that down you see them saying you're doing this you're, you're cheating your neighbor you're 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 um, you're committing adultery you're well, what that what does that have to do with anything your outward actions yeah that's because of your inward spirituality so oftentimes you'll hear a prophet talk about social obligations You'll hear them talk about um, civil uh, duty, how you should be, how you should, um, you know, be be just judges, don't accept bribes, all these different things. And you're just like, what does this have to do with spirituality? Because their spiritual life was lacking, their physical life was lacking. Because they weren't right with God in here, they weren't doing the right things with people. Because the core of the law can be summated with loving God and loving people. So... Um, oftentimes they didn't enjoy it. Jonah, for instance, hated that he was going to those people. He just wanted God to wipe them out. Um, some other prophets, you know, complained, oh, if, if, maybe if I could just shut my mouth and, and then, you know, but then no, because the message would burn inside of me and God would force me to say something. See what I mean? I mean, that, just that, 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 that feeling that, that, that Jeremiah was feeling of tension with, surely I'll die if I hold this message in, but at the same time, I don't want to give it to this, to these people. I desire for these people to listen and to repent. Not for me to go out and say this thing that they're not going to accept, and me, for me to be rejected the whole time. You know, Jeremiah didn't enjoy um, the life that God called him to, um, a lot of times, at least. So uh, having this idea that, that prophets were just out there shaking their fists and really enjoying it too, they it, that's just wrong. Um, also, the, a prophet has to speak even if no one will listen to what they're saying. They have to continually say what God puts on their heart. Uh, um regardless of the outcome. Their their problem wasn't how people received it. Their problem was to say it and to say it with the right attitude. Um, um, so how does this compare how do they compare to the secular prophets, the the, the um, prophets who prophesied for the false gods? Well secular prophets used signs. You know, if a bird flew on this day, it would mean this. If this happened here, it would mean that. And they also used animal guts. They would take in certain parts of, of, of the intestines and um, I believe like the kidney, for instance, and depending on the, uh, on the signs on it, it would mean certain things. 
Um, also, they didn't have so much a focus on morality so much as doing the right things. Hey, you need to remember to offer your sacrifices so that um, this God will be pleased and so that he'll bless your crops. See what I mean? It wasn't, well, you're doing the wrong thing. Your heart isn't after God. See what I mean? Um, so oftentimes they'll mention Zion. What is Zion? I mentioned this earlier. Uh, Zion is the Temple Mount of Jerusalem. It's where the temple was built in Jerusalem. It's also uh, Jerusalem itself. It can also be Judah as a whole or the, or the people of Israel. It can also be the heavenly city. I know that's blocked from the webcam there, the heavenly city. Um, it can be... Um, for God, for for the future paradise, you know what I mean. It can be for the people of God. It really just just depends the context. You really have to pay attention to what it is, um, depending on on where you find it. Um, and so, like I said before, there's no further revelation after Malachi. He's the last prophet, the last um, uh, word that God gave, the last of the books of the Old Testament, for, which happened in 43, 433 BC. And Jesus wasn't born until 6 BC. This is called the 400 years of silence. Um, and not that, that necessarily God wasn't moving people or, or whatever, but that there was no further revelation, spoken revelation, written revelation. Nothing is in our Bibles from Malachi all the way through through till uh, Matthew. Um, <clears throat> so when you're reading the prophets, remember these things. First off, they were written in a unique context. Uh, oftentimes people forget that, that the prophets were written in a context. You know, like um, Jeremiah, for instance, was written about the time that Judah was, was about to be um, destroyed by Babylon. He was he, he was prophesying when people were exiled into Babylon. See, that's that's the context. And so a lot of the, the prophecies that he's going to give are going to revolve around that. And you cannot remove the prophecy from from the, the situation that it was prophesied in. Because then you'll never understand what it actually meant. And if you don't understand what it meant back then, you're not going to be able to apply it to now. See, what people do is they read the prophets and they try to instantly move it to nowadays. Well, you got to understand how it was then before you move it to now. Stinking off, realize most of the prophecy has been fulfilled. A very little of prophecy from the prophetic books has yet to be fulfilled in the future. Um, third, Little is spoken plainly. Usually prophets use things like poetry and that kind of things. They, they hardly ever just straight out said it. Um, also, when you're reading through the prophets, they, the chapters and, and, the, and the different words may not have anything to do with each other. That's because prophets and the, the books of the prophets are compilations of prophecies given by that person. So they're just kind of put together. And there may be themes, but they may not even connect. Um, and lastly, predictions may have multiple fulfillments. They, he may say this, and then the very next line say something else that you think he's talking about the same thing, but he's actually talking about um, a, a huge gap in between. Um, uh, for instance, when you read the Gospel of Luke, um, you get to uh, Jesus uh, reads this, this passage in the temple uh, in chapter... Um, I believe it's 4. Yes, chapter 4, verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind. He uh, To set at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. The very next verse of the part that he's quoting talks about the judgment. Okay, But Jesus doesn't even read that part. Why? See what I mean? Because sometimes in a prophecy, he'll be saying it all together, but different parts are for different time frames. Or there'll be multiple fulfillments. For instance, Isaiah talked about the birth of a, of a virgin. I'm sorry, of, yeah, of a child through a virgin. He was talking later of, of uh, he was talking about, either, uh, I'm sorry, that prophecy has an immediate fulfillment, but then also it had an ultimate fulfillment in Jesus Christ, who was born of the Virgin uh, Mary. Um, so they'll have... Multiple fulfillments, uh, different parts will be for different times. Some parts will be for multiple times. Um, so you just kind of have to keep uh, paying attention when you're reading through the prophets. And this is just a quick picture of where, where the stuff is. Here's Persia here. Babylon is over here. Assyria is over here. Um, Israel is over here. Uh, the different Arabian tribes and whatnot are over here. Um, then there's Egypt over here. And I think Cush it is, I think, that's over here. Um, you know, there's just a bunch of different different things, you know, all kind of happening on the same area. And remember that Abraham came from over here. So, um, 
just real quick going through this stuff. Um, Israel was divided in 930. Um, Jonah came in 770. Amos in 760. Hosea in 760 to 730. Isaiah to se in 740. Micah in 737. Israel falls in 722. Nahum comes and prophesies in 650 about Habakkuk uh, in 630, Zephaniah in 627, Jeremiah in 627, uh, Daniel in 605, Ezekiel in 593, Judah falls in 586, the exiles return in 538, um, Haggai prophesies in 520, uh, Zechariah in 520 to 518, Joel in 500, Obadiah in 500, Malachi in 433. When I'm teaching this class in person, I have a nice little handout that my college professor made, um, and it talks about the, who prophesied during the Assyrians and the Babylonians and the, Bab and the Persians and the, the order of when they prophesied and whatnot. Um, if you want to write this down, you can just pause it. There's not really much to say there. Um, as far as the message of the indiv individual ones, you're going to want to wait and read them um, whenever you can um, as a whole. Uh, which takes us to the book of Lamentations. Um, they figure that it was written by Jeremiah around 586, um, sometime sometime around there. But it, as far as the book claims itself, it was written it was written um, uh, uh, anonymously, and so uh, uh, we really don't have anything to say about that. But it was obviously written by firsthand experience um, of the disaster itself. Um, the person who was writing it clearly uh, clearly experienced the fall of Jerusalem uh, themselves, um, and a lot of the stuff has to do with with that that feeling of um, hopelessness that they felt. Um, Lamentations is largely poetical. Um, I don't really have time to get into that, but it was written in, in, in very um, very roundabout method. It wasn't used. It wasn't written in a very exact kind of way. Um, a real short book, um, and, and really it, it's it's unique how Lamentations unfolds because it talks about the, this destruction and how God causes destruction, but then he comes back to this point about uh, hope in God for the salvation. Um, so uh, if there's any questions, post them in the comments below. Um, this video was a little bit longer than I would have liked, um, but hopefully I, I clarified everything there. Um, really with the prophets, what you got to do is... Um, is really read them, and that's that's how you how you really get a hold of stuff there, um, and uh, so yeah. Uh, if you want to pause it and look at these, look at the map here, and or or look up on the internet the different places that the prophets mentioned, and you'll kind of get a feel for it. Um, uh, okay. Uh, next uh, next video we'll talk about the.